good evening, morning, afternoon, and everything else that um, we can say. Um, Roger uh, is probably not going to be here tonight, so I am your host tonight, Michael Day, and I am very pleased to have Admiral Ferret, aka Frank Parker, back with us. Uh, he has. It's been a while since you've been here, Frank. Yeah, most certainly has. Thank you for having me back. And I would like you to introduce our other guest. Yes, uh, this is one of my producers, uh, Jason Hurt, and he'll be with us for a short time tonight. Uh, and I'm glad that he's been able to show up. Uh, he was the director of uh, one of our films, and we'll get into that a little bit later. But um, Jason, say hi to the audience. Hi, audience. Thank you. Thanks for the intro there, Frank. Appreciate that. Yeah, he he's a, he's well. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Jason. So you have more more knowledge of your schooling and stuff like that. Oh, I'm not sure what 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 you're here. Uh, so. Frank told me about this little project that he has here, um, and I thought, well, that sounds interesting, and I have a background in film and television. I went to school at the University of North Carolina, Greensboro, and graduated with a degree in moving image and sound. Interesting, and get back into, uh, get the creative juices flowing, and it's just a, a great, fun thing to do. And, Technology has come so far from the days that I studied that it's amazing what you can do now. And that's, you know, it's, it really comes down to good storytelling above all. Uh, and it's, it's a great journey that we're, uh, we're just starting on, I think. That is great. Frank, now, um, where are you? I'm sure some of our, um, watchers slash listeners are wondering where you are we is that are, a green screen yeah that is a green screen yeah i know i i wasn't able to get i wasn't able to get it working down at the sets but behind me is the actual green screen of the sets um and we'll go into that a little bit later um i do have if you want i can i can uh, probably share my screen and, and put that little quick uh you know blurb up there of the the, the sets itself but we are located in just outside charlotte north carolina in a little area called gastonia north carolina bedroom community uh community of uh charlotte um we originally when i had started fan films with dreadnought we were down in kingsland as you know down in st mary's in kingsland but I decided when we got to the point of actually doing an offshoot from Dreadnought and doing Crossroads, that the best thing to do was to try to build the uh, the sets up here or get something going. So um, my mother-in-law, Norma Gibson, um, very nicely let us build our sets in her garage. And how long did it take you approximately to build the sets? Well, you know, I had been saying four months, but I've been corrected by you where you told me you think it only took me two months to build. Well, I think if you put the stuff that you had to move in the garage, that might have been four. <laughs> but I, I really I really think that it was only when you really started with the actual first part of it. I, th I think I think it was about two, oh, two. which is incredible, actually. And, and uh, I mean, I had I had some help, of course, from from Donna, uh, my wife, uh, Donna Parker, and I had help uh, from Stephen Hall, who is who plays our uh, commander uh, Bedford, uh, and my uh, uh, stepson uh, Jesse to help me get the sidewalls up uh, for the uh, turbo lift and corridor doors because I couldn't have done it myself. First of all, I'm not that tall. I was in the middle and I'm holding it up like this. My hands weren't even touching. <laughs> so when they braced it up there. So. Yeah, well, that's that's a good that's a good thing. I, I mean, I've been involved in set construction with Farragut. Very, very little because me and a hammer don't get along very well. 
Yeah, that's why we just put you off to the side all the time. Absolutely. Yeah. That's the best place to put me. Right. But yeah, I mean, it it was incredible how fast you got those up. Um, how many episodes have you used your actual bridge so far? Well, actually, we have done two episodes on the bridge. Uh, however, Jason can tell you about uh, the first one he did, Question of Balance. Why don't you tell him what we had to do on that bridge? <laughs> oh, my. That was um, – well, it doesn't look like the bridge in the episode. Um, of course, that's by design, but it it took uh, it took a bit of configuring and – moving some green screens around and man i tell you what the lighting was was something else it took us uh it probably it was an ordeal it was probably four hours of staging and lighting and and uh, moving the green screens and everything just to get it just right so everything was hidden the way it needed to be and i mean ultimately i think it i think it worked out you know with the final product i think it really turned out really well um with everything that we've done so pretty proud of it. it was an ordeal it was fun it was a you know labor of love right frank a labor it, of love it was and it also that was the uh episode after our pilot episode called questions of balance question of balance and also jason uh has the director's credit on that because he directed it and i think he did a great job and i'm looking forward to him doing more uh on the direction and I, I do need to talk to him a little bit later because I had a discussion with Vance, our writer today. Um, and um, I'll talk to you about that after, but uh, he might want you to pick up uh, episode nine and show you the bullet points for it and see if you want to write that. Okay. Yeah. So we'll, uh, we'll go from there and we'll talk about that later. Oh, but um, I, I really want to say that I've been really excited with uh, the crew that we have come on board with. Jason has been an extremely uh, great help. I, I, I brought him up to the producer level because he has been sort of like my right hand man. And, and he tells me when I'm wrong. Oh, Randy. You're wrong, Frank. You're wrong. Thanks. Hi. Um, <laughs> Why? Jason's Scared laughing, so nice to meet you, Jason. But Jason's laughing, so yeah, Jason. This is Randy Landers, and I think I've introduced you to his series. Uh, it's something about a potemp potemkin. <laughs> and his, and he also has the craziness to build bridges in his basement. Never mind. <laughs> well, not all of us can can afford the garage, right? Or have someone that wants to donate a large garage. Well, you know, I'll tell you what. Because of the heat that we've been dealing with, I wish I was in your basement. Somebody needs to donate some air conditioning for that garage. <laughs> well, I am delighted to be in the basement where the air conditioning, all the cool air flows down into the basement. There you go. Yeah, we can. yeah that's, that's the one thing with sets. It's... If it doesn't have AC, it is not fun filming, especially in the summertime. It was, uh, it was pretty brutal. So the second one that we, we shot, which was called uh, You Are Recalled, we actually did in my ready room, which is, so we used the sets there. And what we discovered there is the fact that we need to, to light that a little bit differently. So I have to put a new type of light because we just, we, we had a devil all the time of lighting. But I think we did pretty good for, you know, out of the shoot on those two that were filmed in the garage itself. Mm -hmm. And what, um, how many more films have you got lined up that you know of that you're going to be filming on the bridge? I'm assuming it's going to be when it's a little bit cooler. Yeah, it's definitely going to be what uh, I'm looking at right now is uh, Jason, myself, uh, Stephen Hall, Donna, and Carolyn, my wife, and my stepdaughter, and plus our production team of um, Gifford. Uh, what's Gifford? Oh, Cord Cordova. I forgot his last name. 
Uh, his crew will be doing the actual filming down there. We're going to be doing an outside shoot for the next one, which is called um, <clears throat> Rebirth. And we'll be doing it in a park on August 27th. So we're dealing with that. And it's a landing party scene of that. And then hopefully in September, October, we're going to shoot the bridge scene. And I'd like to try to get that out before Christmas. The next one after that is going to be a long one. It's going to be called Romulan Ales. And uh, it looks like it's going to be a two-parter. And I'm very excited about that. Um, it's, I'm not going to spoil it, uh, but we've got a really interesting concept that we're dealing with. And the reason I don't want to spoil it is because I'm looking at Randy going, I wonder if I could steal it from him. I'm already trying to get, I'm already trying to get his chair. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. I, I was wondering if you were going to play both the, the, the captain and the Romulan commander myself. All right, Michael, you and I need to have a talk. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, um, you know, I, I had my uh, reasons for allowing Randy to come on. <laughs> just, just, to, just to, so I could have two people to shoot me. Well, actually, no, three. Actually, three. Yes, I think so. Um, and Donna says hi to me. I guess she is avoiding you, Frank, but I don't know why. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. But yeah. um, you know, but that, but that's all. It's all good. It's all good. Um, now, you you said you've got you. Can you show the uh, video of the sets? Actually, you want to yeah. pull that up for us, and we can take a look. Yeah, I was nagging him, Frank, that you needed to have that video ready. Yeah, you know, I I tell you the truth, I um. Let me see if I pull it up. Well, if you can't find it now, then we'll we'll go back to that later. Yeah, while, while you're doing that, I can pull up my um. I have to pull up a browser on the side. It's no biggie. Okay, so, Jason, I'm, I don't think I don't think you mentioned, or did you, what character you were playing and giving a background of your character? Oh yes. Okay. So what? No, let, let me give you a, a, a rundown of what Crossroads is, is all about. So, Crossroads is a continuation and a spin-off of my first series that I have, I created, um, which was Dreadnought Dominion. Um, I very, I, I think I mentioned the last time we were together that uh, I had left fan films for a while uh, because of things that were going on at the time. And when I came back to fan films, I said, well, you know, I really can't, I really can't, um, I really can't go in and take over what these guys have done. I mean, they, they started, we produced Anchors Away and Haunted under my tutelage. And then they continued with it. And I said, well, what I'll do is I'll shoot one more, um, you know, film with them. And we came up with Passengers with Baggage. And then I would, you know, start my own, um, I would start my own, um, production and that turned out to be um there we go, that's a little bit more. that turned out to be our um just pull that up and anytime we're ready to the fair yeah i'm just gonna set that up so when i share the screen it's ready to go okay um so when i took on crossroads uh after that uh, I reprised my role as Commodore Sam Grissom. They had written me off as uh, an admiral to Starfleet. That's where I went to. And then I said, well, let's see, I want to try to get back to Commodore. So I devised it where so I was demoted and ranked to Commodore. But someplace in the next few episodes, I'm going to go back to admiral. I kind of like the, the term admiral instead of Commodore. And um, we'll be going through there. So Sam Grissom is not the hero type of person. He's more of the, I've got a lot of baggage. You know, I'm not the Kirk, I'm not, I'm not Cisco. I'm, 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 I'm a person that's a little bit more down to earth. 
Um, and then my crew, well, I got rid of Randy real quick. <laughs> uh, my crew, uh, I've asked to, you know, come up with their own type of, um, their own um, personas and, and to work on it. Uh, so what it is, is this is me after the Academy coming back, taking on a new ship that has some special features, has some secrets to it that the Federation doesn't know about. Uh, and we're more of an experimental craft. So I didn't, I don't have to really stay that tight to canon, even though I'm trying to stay as close as possible. But we have things that we can do with this that uh, other productions may or may not be able to. Okay, that uh, that that is a good rundown. Um, is that uh, film ready to pop on, Frank? Or okay, sharing. Did you give me permission to share? Uh, share? I should have. Okay. There it is. Yeah. Okay. All right. And let me. Greetings, everybody. My, My name is Frank, Frank Parker. Parker. I'm, I'm one of the executive, executive producers, producers for Crossroads Project Gemini. And what I'd like to do today is show you around a bit of the bridge and the sets that we've created so far in our little universe here, which is a Star Trek fan production set somewhere between the end of the TOS era and the beginning of the TMP. However, we do have some divergence and we do have some interesting episodes coming up in different areas of Star Trek universe. We are called the USS Harrison. It is a Gemini type ship. It's, that's the class Gemini. And it is a Fournay cell for those of you who have been following along. So this is the command bridge. And I'm just going to walk us around a little bit. First of all, I want to come out a little bit here and show a little bit wider shot here and shoot down a bit. And you can see the helm is in front of us and the command chair. And then we have four stations in the back. And we'll go over those as we continue with this little project. So I'm going to pan around here and you can see what we have so far. Of course, it's not a 360 bridge. And I'm shooting here. Come back. Across the way here and you see the panels and you'll see the doors and you'll see the set that we have set up for the bridge. I built this all myself with the help of my wife and a few other people when they could manage it but the entire bridge was pretty much a project and a labor of love that I created over approximately four months while I was on COVID leave. Let me just pan up just a little bit. And there you go here and we'll get this here. I'm trying to do this slow so you can get an idea. We'll go up to the stations in a little bit. But there we go. So this is the bridge so far. I'm standing where the view screen will be. I'm going to bring this back to the center. And there we go. So let me pick up my camera here. And we're going to take a little bit of a walk as I get out of here. And this is the bridge. And then what I'm going to do first is this is the second part of the set which is my ready room. And this is 
set right off the bridge with doors. And I'm gonna come in here a bit and I'm gonna focus in. And that's my calm, and of course the table, porthole screen, a little bit of background here. And of course, just about here is where we finish setting up. But I'll here have some things. I'll be adding a little bit more to this set as we go. But I wanted to bring this into focus. This is the first actual role I ever played in a Star Trek fan film. And this is Admiral Sam Black, and it was with Lee Gartrell's Romulan Wars back, oh, back around 2013, 2014. And that's what got me into fan films. And then, of course, I worked with a Farragut. And I was a set builder down in Georgia and St. Mary's and also in, in uh, Kingsland before the sets were sold. And I started off the production Dreadnought Dominion and produced a couple of uh, films there. And then I left fan film for a while. And when I came back about two, about a year and a half, two years ago, I said, well, I can't really go back to Dominion, so I'm going to have to find a new thing to do. So I shot one episode with them called Passenger with Baggage to explain why I left. And then I created this new exciting fan film, Crossroads. Now, this is our... Definitely our, um, let me see, get a little bit of a shadow there. Our um, dedication plaque, the USS Harrison, it's a Gemini class. Jupiter Station Sol and her numbers are NCC 1983. And uh, silver, I'm going to be replacing the silver uh, trim. I'm not too happy with it. Over here, of course, we've got a turbo lift that is still being finished a bit. Originally, it was going to be a quarter, quarter, and then I decided to go with a turbo lift. The doors do actually work. In this right here, let me see if I can move out a little bit so you have a little bit more um, visibility. This is the science station. On here, I have in the middle is a digital photo uh, frame, uh, two small 14 inch TVs on both sides. And then I have a tablet for the moray and I put a bunch of LEDs together. And if you look at these panels, I designed all these panels from existing Star Trek things, but I also took and added uh, that, made them high resolution. And these are on backlit lights. And these are shadow boxes. This is the science station where Commander Michael Bedford will sit, who is my science officer and first officer. Over here is the communications area. And in communications, we have Lieutenant Danan Stewart, and she is the comm officer. And back here to engineering. In engineering is our Commander Holly Bedford. She is our engineer. And security, let me bring this up a little bit here, will be Lieutenant Commander Marcus Yeager. These doors are a hall. 
will be going to a quarter. And as I turn around, I have my bridge chair. And I have backlits for the controls. And this is looking forward to our green screen. And we will be setting up all of our forward view shots from this location. Let me go down here a little bit. Again, I had to do a lot of work on this particular setup. It's very, I believe I took a, a, a template very close to the Final Frontier panel. And what I did was I took a bunch of things and reworked them and just had to do a lot of typing in here, like where it says phaser charging. That's all uh, me redoing the lettering because when I first got all these pictures, they were so low in resu uh, resolution, I had to throw it into um, Photoshop and redo this. And I had to render these very high to get this detail. And once again, this is a backlit. I changed the buttons on the controls. They were different. They were more TNG. The fire control, the deflector shields, and the tor torpedo loading and phaser charging are definitely pictures that were online. However, again, I had to do all the rendering and making sure the colors were correct. Being colorblind, that was fun. Filling those in so they did not go bad when they were blown up to this size because this is an eight by two control panel. So it's eight foot wide. Down here, we have the control panels. Um, I usually had those running with nav controls, but we had a power outage and I had to reset all the computers in okay. here nope. on the um, on the internet because those these uh th those uh, happen to be um kindles very fir first generation kindles for cost and they only work correctly if they're connected for some reason to the internet my command chair i have two uh, two tablets there i took a gaming chair created the arms out of a template that i designed all this here that I put together was one piece at a time and I designed this as I went. It's modular and my original design as close as I wanted to come to make it look like a Star Trek era ship. Somebody said on one of the other ones, I went a little bit too fast. So let me do a screen grab of this. So we have three episodes out now. And we have the pilot. A question of balance, and then uh, we will, and then we have um, you are recalled, and we'll be working on more as time goes on. So, anyways, this is the USS Harrison. This is Crossroads. Executive producer Frank Parker Jr., executive producer Vance Major. Producer Michael Day. And we've got some associate producers coming up, and I'll announce those later. And we are continuing our travel of the universe. Thank you very much. And I want to thank those people that have embraced in the fan film community. I want to thank Valiant, Michael King, Avalon Universe with Josh Irwin. Of course, Constar with 
with uh, <laughs> one of my one of my things came up <laughs> with an old video. Uh, Vance Major and Constar Universe. Uh, George Kyan with Antilles. Um, Jose Cepeda with Nature's Hunger. Um, Dave Chang with um, Star Trek Fan Productions International. Um, of course, my old production, Dreadnought Dominion with Gary Davis and Randy Wren. Uh, if I miss uh, Kenneth Thompson in, in the salad and uh, trying to think, I'm going to miss out. Uh, of course, Lee Gartrell with Romulan Wars. Um, Michael Studelberg with Star Trek Eagle. It's, it's just one big, wonderful group that we have out there. The original Farragut with um, Michael Bednar and John Broughton. Um, those are fan films, not the productions uh, of the larger group. These are fan films that are out there now. Uh, we have Nick Cook and we have Robin Hurt, um, Intrepid and um, in Robert Hurt's production out in, uh, in the Netherlands. It's just it's a great in Sam Cook doing all his 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 stuff and his graphics. So it's a wonderful group of people that are out there making these fan films for you people. And uh, I hope that you uh, come to us and, and kind of watch them. I mean, all of us have YouTubes. Uh, most of our stuff is on Phil, uh, no budget productions, Bill Barrett productions on YouTube. Um, have yourselves a great day, and thank you very much. I, I am a Paul Randy. I thought I had mentioned you in there. Oh, keep me out of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would, I, I would like to say I was very surprised to see the sticky note on the back of the captain's chair that said, ship to Lexington. Yes, oh, I know, yeah. I know. Excellent, I, excellent. I, I, I take it we lost Jason. <laughs> yes, he, 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 he said that he had to go, he has to get up early. Yeah, in the morning, he, to, so, he, yeah. he didn't take a vacation like I did, but I'm glad that he was here. But so I, Frank, I, I wanted to ask you. Yes. So you, you, you named about a dozen fan films other than your own. And that's awesome because all those guys are friends of ours as well. But are you going to be filming in some sort of cross universe with all of those people? I, I have done some. Yes, I have. We have okay. Done, we have done cross universe. I've been in Antilles. I have been in Nature's Hunger. Uh, I have been in Star Trek. As, your, as, as Admiral Grissom? Yeah, as Admiral Grissom. Okay. Yeah, it's the same character. If I do a fan film, uh, the only one right now that I would make any um, any change on would be the fact that uh, if Lee Gartrell does, uh, he's asked me to do a couple scenes for whatever he's up to, and I'm planning to do that. But that it, I started hit with him as Admiral Black, so that would be the only time that I would make a change. But I have made in my um, in my bio is technically black is my great 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 grandfather. So you know, keeping it from that point of view. So that would be the only thing. But yeah, I um, I, I figure it's 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 like anything else. Um, if you're if you're doing something, it's easier to stay continuous if you're going back and forth. I mean. We have, um, well, let's see now. Um, I've been in Antilles. I'm going to be in Nature's Hunger. Uh, they're doing something that I'm waiting to get more information from uh, Star Trek International that they're doing something. So we're kind of, yeah, we're, we're kind of, we're, we are kind of playing in the same universe. Okay. okay. And you know, um, this is a strange we question. Are behind, we are behind on other questions. Go ahead. Oh, one, one final question. You don't think that'll be confusing for the audience? No, I don't think so. Because okay. 
because I think a lot of our fans follow everything. They follow the other, they, they do follow the other fan films. So. Okay. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. One question. Um, what is the favorite, your favorite fan film that you've been in, Frank? Favorite, or is that too difficult? Is, to, it, is, uh, it, is that a loaded question? <laughs> I think it is. That's why I was reluctant to uh, bring it up, but I said I better. Because there's a more loaded question right afterwards. So. Yeah, probably. Well, let's put it this way. I've enjoyed every production that I have been in. So anything that Sam Grissom has been in, I have been extremely happy with. Okay. And what's your favorite scene? Actually, I do have to say my favorite scene is out of a um, one that we did for Constar called Running Up the Hill, where myself and my protagonist, uh, Eric Menard, uh, had a real uh, interesting discussion i think from the, the fact that we were both in two different locations and we both uh kind of know each other i think our energy did come up and it was it was pretty strong and uh, i i do think that it's that that particular scene was good so yeah and i uh, had a few things to say when when we were doing the bridge Hey, copycat. How you doing? Thanks. And then he said, very good indeed. Thank and you, you have done a good job on this set. And you really have, Frank. You have done a marvelous job. Yeah. I, the one shot that I hate is I got a wall. And that's a detachable wall. And it's sort of like at an angle. So I got to <laughs> crop it up. Mm -hmm. It's in the other room. But I've already taken the silver down off there. Yes, it, it, it is without a doubt. I mean, I am I am very happy with where they have gone with it. Um, I I think I would have taken it in a different direction, but then everybody else has has more of a, you know, has their own take on different things. Um, and, and for me, this is this is where I wanted to go. I mean, a couple of the episodes that they did are are fabulous, but um, they they weren't what I had thought of at the time. So you know, but uh, I will be pursuing my thoughts, of course, in this production. And I I work very closely with Vance. I mean, Vance does do my writing. Um, I wrote the first one uh, almost completely, and. Uh, we had a saying that we had in there that we were going to use in another film, but it didn't come out. So instead of throwing that scene away uh, between him and my my uh, engineer, uh, we threw it into the, the pilot. So it, it, it worked out well. I don't like throwing scenes away unless I really have to. So if you, I mean, if people shoot the scenes, then we'll help. You know, we'll do you know, help along. Now, in you, as you have said, you played several characters, and I think I know what your favorite character that you have played in fan films. Is, but can you tell us what that you, what the character that you have played? Well, I, I kind of actually, I, I mean, I'm waiting I, to I, hear this. Yeah, I, I enjoyed Grissa, but, uh, you know, um, I kind of enjoyed being a Romulan on the Romulan Bridge because I helped build that dang thing. And, uh, I, I, Michael, I have something to tell you after about that that I don't want to say on screen. And I, actually, I talked to that person at the convention this week, and that person is really excited to, to go back and forth on that. So, uh, yeah. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, she was at the 501st table. Oh, then I know. Who, I definitely know who you're talking about. Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. And this is another uh, question. Do you prefer acting in TOS or the Picard? Well, you know, this this is this is interesting because um, 
there is going to be a shift at some point. And uh, if you if you've seen a question, if you've seen you are recalled, it it's uh, actually working in the Picard era, and it really it it really is interesting because of the concept that we're using on that. Um, the, the the Harrison uh, sort of gets pulled in, through a time. Uh, warp and ends up in the Picard era and, and that it's around the, the 10th episode and then we'll see where it goes from there but uh, it, it was fun if you notice uh, if you haven't seen it uh, you are recall um, I start off in a um, I start in up in a uh, Wrath of Khan bomber jacket and uh, I end up in in the uh, the um, Picard series Admiral uniform, and uh, it's it's a uh, something I'm looking forward to pursuing because they 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 put me into a predicament, and that's why I like about my characters. The fact is, is, there's no clear cut. You know, I am not a dashing hero. I am you know a person that you know has baggage, and I'm a person that you know has to work out a lot of things and. I didn't want to be a superhero. You know how that goes? I, I wanted to be a real person, you know, with real problems, with real things to overcome. To get some of the um, administrative stuff done, as I see who's watching now, um, we have a couple of likes so far from Dave and Roger and Tim. Tim, I hope you're doing okay. Um, much all the fan films out there. Okay, and, you're, uh, bre you're breaking up a little, Michael. Am I? I was afraid of it. Yeah, I thought it was my connection, Michael. I'm beginning to realize it's yours. Yeah, I've been morning, so which I shouldn't be. But um, there are storms in my area, so mm, that yeah. could be the problem. We just had a few um, ourselves. Yeah. So um, is there any you would discuss on air, Frank? Since I'm losing connection, and I'm the best one. We cut short tonight. Well, um, I, I basically, I, I think we've... Um, you know, covered a lot, and I really do appreciate you having me back on. And you know, anytime you want to come back on, uh, as long as, as as Randy will let me come back. <laughs> oh, you can come back any time, Frank. I'm just not sure we'll let Roger or Michael come back. Well, yeah. there you go. <laughs> but to, but I I do want to. I do want to uh, throw a hand. Uh, I, I do want to throw a compliment to you, Randy. Randy, you have helped me a lot over the last few years. You helped me in the beginning by taking on a couple of the films and trying to help me get those out. And I really appreciate all that you've done for me. And I'm glad that you and I've been able to, re you know, retain a good relationship. I mean, it's great. I mean, I, no. enjoyed, I enjoyed coming up and, and seeing the sets. I mean, you inspired me in a lot of ways to do this because I said, no, really, Brandy, you did because I didn't want to be like your sets because I didn't want to take away. But you gave me the idea of saying, yeah, I can do this. Well, I, I, I'm just delighted that we're still friends after all these years. And I was glad to help out with Dreadnought Dominion's first two episodes. And um, I'm delighted. I, I was talking earlier today that I'm so delighted that you've built your own sets. And people do not understand how I can do this many productions at this level of quality or whatever per year. And I'm like, I have my sets. And now you've got your sets. And you can film anytime you want and you can do anything you want. And, you know, the air conditioning can probably be a problem, but, you know, but you can work through that. And North Carolina is a lot cooler than Albany, Georgia was or Birmingham, Alabama. I can just imagine. I, 
in just a minute. Let me ask you a quick question. You, your first sets were on uh, your carport, right? That is correct. It was a 22 foot wide carport. We made them 25 foot in diameter. And so they stuck out three feet into the driveway. How did you deal with traffic? Or with did what? You, did you have traffic noise? <laughs> I no, I, I had I had bird song from time to time. Right. Um, and so we just added the uh, additional, we turned up the bridge noise. So it sounded like the bird song was pretty much part of the instrumentation making beeps and stuff. Okay. But after we kill Michael, we'll take over the entire Rogers network and, and run over the whole place. Hey, I think that would really be a good thing because Michael really doesn't know how to enter. I yes. know. It's just terrible, isn't it? It's horrible. We're plotting killing you right now, so don't, don't pay us no mind, Michael. Oh, no, I was reading lips. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was still on. I'm. Oh, okay. I'm trying to figure out what's going on with my internet connection. See if I can fix it. So. I thought it was mine. I'm glad it's no, not it's mine. mine. Okay. And I got some warnings, and I was going, "Why am I getting warnings? I'm hooked up to Ethernet." Yeah, you know, I'm coming and going, so it's it's like whoa. But um, but Frank, I do appreciate all the all the help you've given me. In fact, um. You're you're being very polite. My favorite role that you did was the Romulan commander on Starship Farragut. I mean, and I told Michael, I will have him back as the Romulan commander. And Michael <laughs> says, No, 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 you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> if you ever need a Romulan commander, I'd be. As a matter of fact, I because I've got a a role that I'm doing for uh, for another uh, series that we're doing. It's a uh, a film where I'm supposed to be a commander back in Pike's day and, you know, commander. And I had to shave off my beard, which was no problem because I said, do I have any shoots coming up that I need to have the beard on? So I shaved it off and in a week and a half later, it was back. So if you ever need a Romulan to play a Romulan, just let me know. As long as I can be Dalen, that's my Romulan name. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we can as long as no one's going to come after me and say, no, you can't do that. Um, Have you Gail and Krikak? <laughs> <laughs> Besides, though, if I have you as a Romulan commander, then Bill, what would Billy do? <laughs> hmm. Got a point there, too. Get another uh, win. <laughs> he, he he did the Romulan commander in last month's episode Bottles of Ale and, and everybody's like what what does his name mean and I'm like you don't know what that name means no what does his name mean and I said well um, his his um, science officer is computanus which means to add and subtract so she's the calculator <laughs> and I said the security chief is potentus which is strength so that's a good one and they says yeah but crocutus what does that mean and i said it means hyena and she said she's everyone just started laughing because they all realized you picked that name on purpose and i'm like yeah <laughs> besides michael says he wants to come back and be a klingon general or something i'm trying to work this out you know, the, the thing is, is I said to him, why aren't you ever in any production? He says, that's when I quit. You know, I well, said. He, he, he was like, I'm coming out and I'm going to be there for your next shoot. And I said, oh, good, because we're short a few people. Oh, I can't make it. <laughs> I know, just, just like that, you know. Just like that, I've, I've lost a, a producer, a webmaster, and a, and a guest star. <laughs> Oh, well. And he just sits there in his little Baltimore castle, just <laughs> now. Are you sitting in the captain's chair right now? No, you know, it, that's the funny thing. This is my I've got a screenshot behind me. Oh darn. I was gonna have you show me the dimensions of it so I could get measurements. You know, the <laughs> thing was I told Michael to ask you if you wanted them and I will send them to you. I actually got I actually got one of our one of our actors in Birmingham um, 
I'm sending him a extra chair that we had, and he's going to be building us a command chair for um, an upcoming project Michael knows about. And, um, and uh, it's going to be awesomely cool to have another location that we can film a bridge at, even though it will mostly be green screen. Yeah. If, if, look, at, and, and I know if you ever want to use a green screen of my bridge, or, you know, for your production or something, I can change things for you. Feel free because I uh, mean, I, there's a bridge I, there. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, uh, Michael Bednar, actually, um, I had him, he sent me a picture of the auxiliary control yeah. and we modified the panels so that they looked like they were more in our movie era uh, with the displays and everything. And uh, everyone's like, oh, you went down there to film and, and, and how is this everything down there at St. Mary's? And I'm like, uh, nope. And I have no idea. <laughs> It was just wonderful. Um, Michael sent me this thing, and I was uh, Mr. Bednar sent me these this picture to use, and golly, it looked great in that episode. So you know, feel free. You know, oh, you can always count on us to re reciprocate. How are those doors working? Are they working good? Yeah, they're working fine. Not having any problems whatsoever with them. Um, the only the, what I hi did, Donna. I had a little bit of problems in the beginning getting it to sit straight, but uh, they they work fine. There, I have not, and it's funny. Everywhere I go now, I see the same thing I used for all the barn sliding doors now. Everything well, my fine. wife's bathroom for her off her bedroom now has this has the barn door, um, mm -hmm. and and the same rack and everything. Um, the only problem that I've had lately is that if the if the joint is too perfect and the doors line up perfectly, you can't see that it's two doors separating. So I add a, I let it be a little off, maybe a half an inch off, and it gives that dark line down the middle that you expect to see on Star Trek. I'll, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. Yeah, this week, uh, I'm on vacation this week, and I want to finish uh, doing the uh, turbo lift in there. I'm going to sort of like angle a four footer this way and then having another four footer coming out that way and just to give it and then towards my uh briefing room that will be the entrance for people to come into so point to where you enter your turbo lift from just point uh right here is it which way i uh -oh. can't see uh, point okay and is forward of that is the ready room door? Yes, forward of that is the ready room door. And then on the other side will be the corridor. And the only thing I'm going to use the corridor for on this, this side is um, I'm going to put just a blank. I may even use cardboard if it looks okay for filming. And I want that is going to not be used that much because it's a corridor. I just want that there to have people see, like we were discussing, the two exits on the bridge. Right. Yeah, that, from that point. Yeah, it's, that's, I've got to tweak one of our, one of our turbo lifts has no interior, and I need to fix, need to fix that, I think. It, uh, is that the, on the other side, I always thought that was a corridor. That's supposed to be a turbo lift too, so you're supposed to have two turbos? You know, that's what, what I'm, I haven't decided on. We didn't give it a lot of thought. We just wanted to cover up that door because it yeah. was it's pointing straight at a piece of concrete. Um, I forget what it's called when you have the concrete things that the house sits on. Yeah, the, um, what do you call it? The stanchions? No, not stanchions. Pillars. Pillars. So I just want to... But it, it gets to within like 18 inches in the corner and 36 inches on the side. So I'm just trying to tweak it a little bit. And, you know, I've been thinking of getting cardboard. I've got a bunch of flat styrofoam pieces that came with the big TV. And I'm like, you know, I can make something, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, it just needs to have something so I can leave that door open when Victoria storms off the bridge. Yeah, yeah. 
exactly. Yeah, so you don't see that. And that's that's why on on this side, uh, I hate this. On this side <laughs> over here, over here, you know, I'm going to have to have something that's you know blocking because behind that is is like three and a half. Uh, I think it's three and a half feet I left in storage space for my mother-in-law that she's got stuff in there. <laughs> How magnanimous of you! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so generous, so kind. You gave her three and a half feet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it goes down the lane. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna, then what we need to do is we need to get it all packed in tightly so I can put props there too. <laughs> uh, like I said, my wife my wife wants me to get rid of our shuttle coop, and I'm like, no. Yeah, Michael said, hey, do you need a shuttle coop? So what are they doing yeah. with it? <laughs> right now, my wife would be glad to come in here and discuss terms. So, <laughs> What we need to do is we need to steal the What? Romulan. You need a what? We need to steal the Romulan bridge and put it someplace where we both can use it. I, I tried to steal it one time at a convention in Atlanta, and I couldn't get it out of there. Uh, they, they, just, they, they just hung around it a little too much. See, the thing is, is I had that stupid centerpiece in here, and Michael gave it to me. And you should have kept it. Known, if I had ever known. You should have called me and said, Randy, do you want this centerpiece? I'm like, oh, yes. I'll drive. Where is, where is it at? And you'd have had, you would have had me driving through with the pickup truck. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I thought I worked for years to figure out, you know, when we built it, of getting the entire set because Michael said, I don't know if we're going to use this afterwards. And uh, he kind of offered me the whole thing, you know, at, at one point, but I just said the center. And I said, if I could just figure out how to set it up outside, it wouldn't get ruined. I would have done it. Is it still in one piece anywhere, Michael Day? Um, it's one piece, but it's not the way it was before. No, it's, it's been, that's the best. Since I think we've lost Michael again. Oh, there he is. No, nope. he just moves every once in a while to remind us he's still alive. Yeah, I have to read the computer. When I oh, when my. I went down there to to shoot passengers with baggage, that was the first thing I looked up, and they had taken apart the front panels on it to put two side things on, put it back completely, nailed it back. I said, you got to be kidding me. And, and Dan says, oh, no, it was never screwed. It was always nailed. I know. I put the damn thing together. Yeah, I don't want to tell you this, but I use orange juice caps for those little knobs. Nothing wrong with that. Works perfectly. Looks great on camera, too. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Sunny Delight, in fact, is the the brand that we were using. World. Um, we can interview each other because this guy, this clown can't. This guy's never here. Roger needs to hire both of us as hosts and pay us like $800 a show. What do you think? Yeah, I'm good. I'd do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it for half of what Frank's charging you. <laughs> hmm. I am the cheapest guy in fandom. So, um, what? So you've got. What are you filming next? We're filming Rebirth next. Okay. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, going to be done. Um, we're going to be shooting the outdoor uh, away team scenes uh, in August. Uh, we're going to a, a park that's about two hours away from us. And the camera crew that I have working with me, uh, Gifford Cordova, who's also going to do some editing and uh, hopefully get his light wave skills back up for some of the modeling, um, will be uh, down there and he'll be doing the filming. And then uh, sometime in September, I hope to be doing the bridge scenes and setting up the conference room. Um, in, in doing that because we have a couple sets that we need for that. Uh, so hopefully that will be out. 
I'd like to, depending on what the editing is like, I'd like to get that out before Christmas. However, if I don't, um, I've already talked to a, a couple of my people. Uh, I have been inspired by you and um, Star Trek International Fan Productions to see if I can put together a small, very short Christmas thing like you guys have. And I think it would be very appropriate. So uh, we're working on, on that concept. And uh, we've got kind of a working concept that's a little bit different than, uh, you know, both of them. But I think it's going to work out well. And uh, I'd like to have those three, you know, around that time, you know, everybody watching those, you know, just uh, for the, the spirit of the holiday. So. Yeah, Victoria wrote that and was it was a beautiful script and everything. And it's not very long. And Dan Reynolds from um, Studio Warp 66 uh, did a great job on the he's like, I'm I'm sign, trying to describe I want the neutron start, I want it to slow down, slow down, big flash, and he's like, I can do that. Boom, there it was. The the visual effects beat the edit being done. Oh wow. Wow. And that that's, doesn't happen that's a rarity. <laughs> that's a, yeah, that uh, is an absolute rarity. Yeah. Oh, um, so, so with your hours of snow, huh? I said to give you kudos on your 800 working hours on snow. <laughs> <laughs> Snowbound was somebody was today telling me, well, so and so has got to mask those little light sockets in the room, and there might be like he's he's worked on it for X number of hours, and I'm like, try X number of hours for 180 days, 210 days. I mean, I would literally go off into the bedroom, disappear, told my wife, "Have fun," and she's sitting there doing a puzzle, and she's finishing a puzzle, and I come out, and I'm, she says, "Oh, are you done now?" And I'm like. No, I'm just, I just can't see anymore. I just have to go lie down. <laughs> <laughs> People don't understand those masks. I mean, you, you understand, like to mask out Michael's eagle would take no effort whatsoever because it's not moving. But if I were to ma mask out Michael's eyeglasses, that would take forever. Ever, ever, ever. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's, it's one of those things that, uh, People really, you know, they see it and they go, well, these are just fan films. I mean, this is in production quality. And you go, believe me, you are seeing hours of work and this stuff is good. Let's see yours. <laughs> yeah. You know, Snowbound got a lot of attention for the visual effects and everybody's like, well, the story wasn't all that much. And I'm like, <laughs> just <laughs> Just whatever. <laughs> um, so tell me, who? What are you casting for? Who are you casting for right now? Uh, I may be casting a couple of extras for uh, the bridge scene when uh, we're down on the planet. I'm going to have to have a couple people sitting at different stations and stuff like that. After and so past, I've got pretty much everybody. I do need a navigator. I eventually have to get somebody who wants to take that role. So, so where do they contact you to become a part of your crew? They can contact me at Phil Ferret. Okay. Frank Park, Frank Dash Parker at BillFerret.com. And people laugh at me because mine is producer at PotemkinPictures.com. Well, actually, the other one is is F Parker at BillFerretProductions.com. And actually, that that <laughs> that goes to Frank Parker. So yeah, it might be easier. F Parker at BillFerretProductions.com. So. There you go. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll put that on the web page when we get finished. Oh, so Michael, what are you doing, fan films? I'm doing nothing right now because I can't get a stable connection. <laughs> <laughs> you're like you're lucky that Randy and I are experienced at this. 
I expect a pay raise, Michael. I've been doing good interview questions. I know you have. I've listened, but I haven't been able to get. I mean, it, it, this is driving me crazy. It says I have Ethernet connection, and then the next thing I know, it goes to Wi-Fi. That's no bueno. Uh, yeah, I know. And then it wow. says very have bad connection when it goes to Wi-Fi. Have you tried mm -hmm. disabling your Wi-Fi? I, I that's what I did a minute ago. Okay. Yeah. Do, do, do say that's when he wife. froze for 30 minutes or something. That's, mm -hmm. <laughs> so what are you using? Cat four? Maybe cat five. <laughs> I probably need cat six. <laughs> so they're thinking, yeah, he's using 30 year old technology. <laughs> <laughs> no, Michael, we don't use dial up anymore. <laughs> no, I know you still do. I know that. Um, so, Frank, I do actually have some more questions. So they reach out to you. What do they need? Like, I require my cast to crew to wear black pants, black socks, black shoes, or boots. Well, it depends on, um, on, on how I do it. I can't pay as well as you know, man. Uh, so neither. I don't pay anybody. No, in no, fact, no, I got no, it. Well, I, I meant, you know, we can't pay in No, nobody can. So, um, yeah, I've heard rumors. But anyways, uh, <laughs> you know what I was talking about. We, we, uh, we can't discuss those evil people. Yes, right. <laughs> but um, I usually try, um, my, my gift to them is, is their uniform top and maybe the pants. Okay, so, so you're doing like what John and Michael did for Farragut. Yeah, you know, it, 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 uh, I, I try to do that. My, my, all my cats, I, I've gifted them their uniforms. The only thing, the only thing I require is boots, because boots are, are something that you know is personal to you and stuff like that. So, um, so what if they don't have boots? Would you take black shoes? I think it could work out something. You know, I mean, masking. Yeah, we could do that. Um, I've got extra boots that they can wear. Um, I, I actually loan people black socks. And on yeah. camera, you can't tell it. Yeah, I know. Uh, there, there's, there's just a lot of different, you know, things to do. I mean, the same thing is, you know, um, if, if I have uh, the lady actors, are, are at, uh, you know, the actors who are female actors, I mean, I don't expect them to, to run around, you know, in the dress. If they want to wear the pants. If they want to wear just the dress, that's fine. Um, to be perfectly honest, uh, I had thought of, of doing a different uniform and, uh, I was, I, at one point I was thinking of using, uh, the TMP, uh, uniform and having somebody try to make them with a black collar and the division colors. Right. And, and use the epaulets on top. But I think we're going to be eventually moving on, uh, to the end, I what I do like about actually what I like about Calibor the most is I really like Billy's, you know, pick of those. Those look sharp; they really do. You know, he came onto the set of um, Webster, and he, the first episode he's wearing the jacket, and then the next thing you know, he's like comes on to the next film and he's like wearing the sweater and he says, Oh, I need to go put the jacket on. And I said, no, you don't. And since then it's been the, the right thing to do. Um, he used it in the Gorn episode landing party. Um, and then the only thing that we did is, you know, they wanted to all have sweaters and I'm like, okay, I can do that. Billy gave me a link, $15 a sweater. I've, I've got the mall sweaters, a dicky, just, you know, the collar part, the, the rest of it hangs down beneath the sweater. Perfect. Looks great. Yeah. And, you know, that's so much better than the, 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 the monster maroon uniforms and their cost. Yeah. And, ridiculous. Yeah. And so I'm just so pleased we, we came up with this solution for, um, our our time frame with the monster maroon being so expensive and un, unworkable um we don't know what to do with our uniforms um i'm looking 
Say again. They, they look extremely similar to the combat uniforms that Kirk, Spock, and McCoy wore in, what was it? Star Trek V. Was it five? Okay, I wasn't sure it was five or six. It's Star but, Trek V. So I said, you know, I mean, they're definitely, you know, uh, there. I mean, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I like the, the ones the Victorian crew. Uh, I think they look sharp. Yeah, Victoria Victoria is refusing to wear the Monster Maroon shirt, even though we have one made just for her. Yeah. Uh, she, she doesn't want to wear it. She says, Jeffrey uh, Green, Captain Grigory from the Potemkin, never wore the Monster Maroon. She doesn't intend to start. Um, whereas other people, um, uh, our new captain, Clinton Riddle, is definitely going to be wearing the Monster Maroon. It looks really good on him. Yeah, I've um, seen pictures of him. It does. It does. Yeah. Um, we were trying to debate whether or not he should keep his glasses or not. And I said, well, let's let's lose the glasses for now. We can add them later. But if we start with glasses and then take them away, it's going to not be as good. Um, but uniforms, what are you going to require? What, what are y'all going to wear? Are you going to, I mean, I've seen you in everything from a lower decks uniform to, um, to a Picard uniform to, um, uh, uh, the, the motion picture uniform. So yeah, what are y'all going to wear? I just got a monster room. Okay. So basically <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know, so you I need know a... it's going to be the Orville <laughs> uniforms. That's well, I thought it. about that. Actually either that or galaxy quest. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> What we will be wearing uh, most of the time until like episode 10, and that's going to be uh, in Monster Maroon. I want not Monster Maroon, but that uh, that type of uh, area, and we'll figure out what we're going to do at that point. Is 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 TOS? You know, I've got you know the blues, and in the in sense, I we do still have like the only problem with those shirts is they are 85 bucks a piece. So, I mean, I do get them for the crew. And then the other thing too, is when I take off the Delta, they leave little, they sew them on. So I've got little pick marks there. It's a pain in the neck and you know how my, I've got the diamond. It was great if I was using Dominion patch, it wouldn't bother me. But since I couldn't steal back my Dominion patch, I had to go with that. So. Yeah, we had, we had two of those that were donated and they kept the emblem. And we we had to we were using the, them for the Congo crew. We rescued two members of the Congo from uh, a planet with a giant robot that was going. Um, it wasn't quite doing exterminated exterminate, but it sounded like the Daleks chasing them on the planet. It was in um, Fraser's Angels, and there there once we peeled off those those emblems, or once the person who donated them pulled off the emblems while I was sitting there in dismay. <laughs> we patched on a little Congo emblem and we're like, oh my God, the uniform is ruined. It can't be used with anything. It was just, oh, horrible. I had to make the Congo um, patches even bigger to hide the runs. Is that what it's called? And the, oh, when the fabric the, goes, yeah. Yeah, the little knit, the little knit mm -hmm. balls were popping up. I mean, it was just so sad. Well, yeah, that doesn't sound like uh, that doesn't sound like the jersey material. What color was it? The goldish or was it the green? The, the, uh, there was a blue one and a red one, and oh, the cool, blue right. blue had a lieutenant commander stripe, and I think the red one had um had an ensign or a lieutenant stripe. Had it had no stripe or a lieutenant stripe, and um. You know, we made use of it. Yeah. And, my you know, to, and my thanks to, and I'm not going to name the donor because they would be mad for me telling them that they picked it apart, but my thanks to that donor because it saved their episode. We got to, to rescue these two people that had been in basically a giant butterfly collection. And if anyone asked, did I rip off the Titan Project? Kind of. Right. Okay. I mean, science fiction is science fiction. If you've noticed, I mean, getting really quick on this, if you've noticed Strange New Worlds in another production had the same almost exact uniforms in the other production had those uniforms before. <laughs> yeah. And I'll so, tell you, um, you, you've seen the red uniforms on um, 
on um, Seth MacFarlane's show, The Orville. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can go pull up uh, Leslie's uniform, her uniform when she was on the Tristan. It's the exact same uniform. And it was, what, six years before Seth MacFarlane's? Great ideas are there, and they never go away, and they're going to get reused. And, and I think what happens, too, is a lot of I, – I really feel this because I've seen concepts in there that have come from fan films. I really think that a lot of the writers do watch some of the fan films or any literature, and they get ideas from it. Well, and, and that's – the butterfly collection I, I i'm trying to remember the other name of it it was called the titan project but it was released as creature and they went to like neptune and they this was creature and it's, it's a really bad movie but you know what i liked it and i stole the best idea of it the butterfly collection aliens like butterflies just like humans do and a little different but that's okay but that but that's entirely right, you know. And the way you look at it is, there's always um, it's like they say in music, you know. Everybody's played the same chord progression sometimes for different songs, but <laughs> the way they put it together. There used to be this wonderful video on YouTube that had the progression of the Star Trek theme, bum ba bum 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 bum, going back in time. Going back to to Holtz's, going back to Beethoven and Bach, and you're like, holy crap, they ripped off Bach. Well, of course they did. By the way, you just demonetized this entire program by doing the theme song. (laughs) Oh, well. I I guess I'll have to take him away. I, I once I once I uploaded a a, a a not a a video of one of our performances, and I got a copyright violation on one of my songs that I had wrote <laughs> music and all. It wasn't a parody. <laughs> yeah, we we uh, I I used one chord from one movie that I just want, I want this one chord right here, and I put it in being warning, and I'm like, no! And I don't know how they got the, how they figured it out, and I went to the musician, and I said, look, I wanted this chord here. Can you put this chord in your music? He put it in there. Burr. No. <laughs> we, we can copyright a chord now? One single chord? Oh, God. I know, it's gotten ridiculous. But you cannot copyright a name. You cannot copyright the... But it's like, who else is going to write a song called Ball Jangles? You know? <laughs> it just... It's not there. <laughs> you know? Yeah. My... my uh, We have a film coming up, and... It's been under like 20 or 30 titles. Matthew Raymond wrote, wrote it. And I think the current title is Outbreak. And he says, that'll be good, right? And I'm like, oh, there was a major movie with Dustin Hoffman with that. And Michael's like, ah, or Matthew's like, ah. As every title he suggested has been used before. So, and that's going to happen. So, you know, yeah, just. Just figure so what's one out. Next, what's your next production that you're shooting for? Um, right now I have. God, oh, I have a cheat sheet. Hang on, I have a cheat sheet. Do you cheat have cheat sheets? Are good. No, I do this. I do this because mm. I'm scatterbrained. <laughs> you know, I've got this one, and I've got this one. Got water on it earlier, but 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 that's a great one. But uh, did I that have, or. People who take notes are smarter than me. <laughs> no, I'm smarter than the dog. See, this is this is anti-dog stuff here. Um, coming up next will be Refugee, which we shot in May, and it's in second unit. Hi, Joe. How are you doing? Um, it's in second unit. It needs music and sound. And then we have P37, which is Project Potemkin. 
and it's cast away. It's been seven years since we were last seen, since we last saw Captain Gregory. I, I'm excited to see this one. I mean, I, I saw when the star, it was when the stars fell or when. Yeah, the night the stars fell from the sky. I love that episode. That I, as far as I'm concerned, that's your best episode. Thank <laughs> I you. love Thank that you. episode. Um, it's it, it's getting visual effects from Mark Berg, and uh, it's got sound and music coming up, and then we have another Caliborn death sentence, which we're reshooting a few scenes, and that means we'll re-edit those scenes. And then the visual effects have been turned over to Ross Trowbridge, who better be getting it done. Actually, he's at a firework thing tonight, I think. Yeah. And then, like I said, we've got Outbreak. Outbreak. Oh, no. At least this we're week. Be, uh, At least name for this week. Uh, the, the name? Yeah, golly. Yeah, you just released two. What did you just release? Because I just got back from a convention. So I got to catch we up. Just, we just released Victoria wrote this script and I said, it needs more Klingons. And she says, really? And I said, yes, really. And so she added more Klingons and I said, well, this is great, but this is like really long. And I, she says, well, I'll shorten it. I'm like, no, no. 25 minutes is okay. And so we, we released it and um, it was prime directive. And I, well, we didn't release it. We edited it, and then we sent it off for music with the visual effects. And then while I was sitting there, I was like, you know, that would make a great Klingon episode. And so we took all the footage with all the Klingons and turned it into its own episode. And I'm not supposed to use the word episode, but I'm letting things slide these days. And so now we released basically... This one story has two sides of the coin. One is the Federation side and one is the Klingon side. Now, you can watch the Federation side and get the whole story. Mm -hmm. Or you can watch the Klingon side and get their view of the story. And it works out, both of them, quite well. Yeah, and I appreciate okay. your asking because um, it's so exciting that, you know, we, we try to do one a month. <laughs> we did two. <laughs> You know, it, when it, it's it's funny that you mentioned that because we just released um, uh, no budget. Just re released well, Antilles released the Pretender on one side. It was in this universe, and the opposite side was called the Pretender Constar Edition from the opposite from the um, from the Mirror Universe side. And when you were talking about collaboration. Um, We've got everybody in there. We've got uh, people from Star Trek International. We've got people from uh, Jose's Jose Sapitas in there. Um, we have, uh, you know, of course, George Kyan, uh, Vance, uh, myself. Uh, I think it, I don't know if Stuhlberg is in there. Hi, Michael. Uh, but anyways. Uh, so, yeah, that was a pretty large collaboration of different people. I think the only people we didn't have in there was Avalon for some reason. Uh, but it, it was, you know, it kind of ties into that, that whole thing. But it's good. I like the idea of having it from two different perspectives, you know, where you're looking at it from that point. Well, how did the Klingons react to it? And how did that? And um, you, most most. I can't say that about Potemkin, but I was going to say most other fan films, they always seem to use Klingons as the protagonists. Yeah, and we don't. And you don't. You use Romulans on occasion or, or other things, and that's what I would rather use. I'd rather use the Romulan because I, I think, you know, boom, 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 we're going to knock you all over the place. You know, there's just so much you can do that. Romulans are cun cunning. And Romulans are, yes, all those out there, I know Keg is going to hate me. Romulans are smarter than Klingons. Thank you very no. much. I just lost my, my membership in Keg. <laughs> Probably. Probably so. Well, here's here's <laughs> a question out here. and uh, Oh, you're going to ask a question? Oh. Not, well, no, someone else is asking. 
and this is kind of in, um, any suggestions on how I can incorporate TNG timeline and the Wrath of Khan timeline in a fan film? Write it. Yes, that's basically right. that's what you can do. I mean, um, take a look at, at the Harrison. We just had an episode come out that the Harrison coming from actually the Wrath of Khan time. I was wearing my. Uh, we were, you know, near the end of the production for that time period. I was wearing my bomber jacket, and we got to the Picard. So if we can get to the Picard era, then you should be able to get to the TNG a lot easier because there's only an 80-year gap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the current episodes that Potemkin films that Potemkin Picture is producing are all set in, I think we're in 2306 now. We started with Project Potemkin in 2297, and we're progressing a little bit further and further each year. And the whole idea is that, you know, there is such a wealth of territory that you can go there. You can write any story and tell any story you want. And it's up to the imagination of yourself and your director and your editor and your producer, and they should make it happen if it's a good story. And That's sometimes, yeah, it's got to be a good story. My problem is that I am steadfast and I don't do crossovers with other productions hardly ever. Um, somebody said, why don't you do that? And I said, because I can't keep track with what they're all doing. And I don't want to conflict. Well, it'll be an alternate universe. I hate alternate universe. No, Michael alternate universe. No. Michael Day will tell you, I do not like alternate universe. Um, even in dark shadows, when they have time travel, I don't like it. Don't do that. <laughs> oh, but it's the most best part of the show. Then you should have set the show in 1796 to begin with. But they didn't like that. They wanted to do it in 1895. So, you know, yeah, see. Like, whatever. See, but... um. You know, there's so many good things, though, about fan films. You can tell the story. It's like fan fiction. You can tell the story you want with the characters you want. And, I mean, I, I, I find it very laudable for you, Frank, that you're up there and you're going from TOS to TNG to DS9 to Picard back to TOS because your ship has certain capabilities that we're not going to go near in mine is no time travel is a no-no in our in our yeah. writing rules and, and, and that and that is fine uh and i can see why i mean it, it depends i mean one of the things that i don't want to do is concentrate as a matter of fact what my concept was in the beginning is what we would do is we would have that capability for maybe jumping 10 minutes into the future or something like that and you know progression but the way it's, it's right is running now it's not going to be a major part of it as a matter of fact it's more of uh i don't think ken's been written but i think it's going to be more of we're going to have a shipwide emergency and somehow we get pulled into a wormhole and that's what actually moves it forward and not some machine or anything like that right yeah so it's it's a the, the major thing in, in, in um, and people have know this, that, that it's been hinted at, the Harrison does have a cloak, but how we have the cloak now is going to be in Romulan Ales because we came up with a, uh, a fantastic idea how to do it and not break the canon of us not supposed to, you know, not supposed to have it. I will give you a small hint. It's sort of like, it's sort of like uh, for want of a nail. Yeah. So, I mean, there's all kinds of ways, you know, the gentleman was asking about TNG and Wrath of Khan. And it's like, um, what you want to avoid is what the um, Berman and Braga, I guess, did for the conclusion of Enterprise when, um, oh, it was all in the holodeck. Oh, that, uh, that's, no. that was very disappointing. Yeah. Plus, they killed off my best character. 
Yeah, trip. Yeah, trip. Trip. So, yeah. um, what are your plans for for are are you so are your set plans complete other than the corridor? Right now, one of the rooms upstairs is being turned into med bay. And that's going to be a small room. Uh, behind me, uh, you can't see this, but the, the, the screen up. Behind me, uh, we're going to, let me, let me just turn this off for a second. Um, and don't mind the mess. Settings. Uh, virtual background. None! Oh! oh. <laughs> I know <laughs> So behind here, I'm, I'm going to be putting a green screen sort of up here, but this is going to be where our, our briefing room is going to be in, in this area. We'll, we'll shoot it from there. As a matter of fact, those black chairs that I have there are going to be the brief room chairs. I've got six of those I got from Ikea. Um, and <laughs> oh, Now, the shuttle crew has chairs from a Mercedes, so come on now, Frank. You've got to go with times. Yeah, see, you, you've got to go with a Porsche. Ooh, oh, first one like who that. gets the Porsche chairs wins. Yeah, there you go. I won't say, you know, as long, only, as, as, long as it's not a Tesla chair, right, Michael? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, no, I, I wouldn't care. <laughs> We're going to strip down your vessel, vehicle, rather, and you're sitting well, there telling that would, me, be, that would be bad, then, yeah. That would be bad? Okay. That would be bad. Yeah, let me see. Oh, well, now he's thing. going to... Um, this is my favorite. Formally dressed for us. This is, this is my favorite error. <laughs> Which one is that? It's Enterprise Admiral. Oh, no. You know, you know how, and I, and I really give Donna a lot of credit. I hope she's still. Randy may leave now. I'm uh, going to throw up now. <laughs> oh, Death, no, no. Enterprise, no. Hector, no, no. what do you, Hector, what do you think of Enterprise? Well, it just sucks, Randy. <laughs> well, you can't argue with the dog. You can't argue with the dog. <laughs> but anyways, I have to give Donna a lot of credit. Uh, I went out and got this blue jacket. She went out and got the material and put this on here. Then I made these things out of uh, some other stuff. Uh, Admiral Frank, I see you soon making some sleeping quarters and living on your ship. <laughs> yeah, might as well. Why not? I got all the uniforms for <laughs> They, I, I live in my ship. It's just below decks. That's right. It's in it's in the lower decks. Absolutely. <laughs> but uh, so I'll be shooting some scenes with that. But I mean, there's some of my uniforms back here. <laughs> what are your crew going to wear though? Are they going to constantly wear the TOS uniforms? I mean, yeah, we'll all we'll be in the TOS until we get into the Picard era and. Uh, uh, we'll be getting those uniforms. Actually, uh, the uniforms that they have right now that I have are the, uh, well, it's this one here. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll be yeah. wearing it at some point. I don't, I mean, I'm not going to, I'm going to, I have the Picard Admiral. Because I like it better than, you know, this yeah. is the one. Yeah, I, I like this one. I had the other one, too, with the black stripes down there. But I, this one is really nice. I like this one a lot better. That's the one that I thought was a lower decks outfit. Uh, no. Uh, I do have a lower decks captive that I just have. And, Show me. Uh, I did just pick up this one. So that's the. Uh, no, that's a strange new worlds. Yeah, that's a nice one. Yeah, this this is Cozy Mart. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah they, she does a great. They do a great job on reproductions. As a matter of fact, that's where most of my uniforms have been coming from lately. Yeah, I, we've got a number of fans who've done the uniforms. Uh, Michael knows Dana Elise. Um, who's done a beautiful job with a number of our jackets and, and fabrics and stuff. And um, I wish she lived closer to Lexington. I, but. I wish she lived in Lexington. I would keep her busy. 
unfortunately, you know, there's only so much money for, for costuming every time. She do mice from hers? Yeah. So, and she did a beautiful job with ours. Who's this now? We'll, we'll go off air and talk. Well, Michael can actually be the one to go off air. It's a mutual mm -hmm. friend of ours. So, was she involved with Farragut at all, Michael? Mm, no, she was not. Because um, she, she was did. still in Mississippi at the time. The one, yeah, who's, she... the one who's involved with Farragut right now on the Monster Maroons is charging a heck of a lot to make them. Yeah, well, when when... You have a fundraiser and generate lots of money. You can charge lots more money. You know, it's one of the the bit in the butt kind of things. Mm -hmm. well, I'm kind of waiting, you know, with all that to see that there must be having a great set being built. So I'm waiting to see that. Uh, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Michael, aren't you sure, Michael? Oh, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they Hector, have. are you sure? Hector <laughs> says, "Well, let's let's find out what Hector says." I'm not so sure, Randy. Oh no, the dog is. Oh dog, no, 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 no! on point tonight. God well, damn! Why, bro. It, I, mean, I can understand why they didn't have it ready in, in January because they're sitting there and making sure that everything's perfect. I mean, it's logical to me. Oh my God! See, this is the thing. I had a conversation with somebody earlier. Oh, Randy, you need to rerun your fan fan. What is it called when you generate money? Um, what is uh, it called? Fundraiser. Yeah, fundraiser and do go go. Go, go you got to do indie go go pop pop. And I'm like, uh, no. Well, what's wrong? Why don't you need the money? And I'm like, because I've been doing it for 12 years. I have quite a collection. Thank you. Um, you know, I don't have any problem with anyone's business model. Mine works for me, and if yours works for you, then then it's great. And let's all make fan films. You know, but. Other people's business models, I don't know. Oh, there went the willow in behind me. Yeah. The only um, thing that I want to do, and this is something I'm still working on how to do it, is I'd like to, I mean, let's face it, it I, I won't always have, I don't think I'll always have access to that garage because, you know, the agents and stuff like that. But what I want to do is, Donna and I have been thinking about because we've got two plus acres of land. Is is seeing if we can put a thirty by fifty down, and and seeing if we can do that. And if we can, we can. If we can't, well, we'll have to work with it at the time. Yeah, and like, okay, uh, Michael, how many viewers do we have right now? Or does it matter? Because it'll get reshown, won't it? It'll get reshown. Yeah. How many? What roughly? Ten. Ten right now live okay so everyone here is going to including you frank are going to get a special sneak preview of what we're doing we i can't get we had five starships and and five crews in birmingham well not all of them can come up here and i certainly aren't paying for uh travel room board food for all oh, of them. Yeah. no way uh, love them to death, but there's no way I can afford to get them up here. So what I've decided to do is I reached out to one of our producers still down there. And he's going to, he's already secured a facility in a library. We're basically checking out the room. Um, it's 50 by 20 or 58 by 28. That's, that's plenty big. We're going to run green screens along the back wall. I could have that size room. It'd be great because mine's only 34 by uh, 24. <laughs> exactly. That's about what the carport was. Actually, the carport was even smaller. But um, so we're going to put that green screener along the back. We're going to put a chair in the middle. We're going to put a green, a small green screen over a table in the front. We're going to put two people sitting there. I'm going to have pe five people standing along the back wall. And by God, the USS Tr Tristan is going to be cleared for launch. And I can't get them up here, but I can, I can help facilitate them filming down there. And then when they get it filmed, they'll send it to me and we'll edit it. We'll do this visual effects. We'll make it all nice and pretty, put a bow on it and release it as another Potemkin picture episode of, of Starship Tristan. And that will be great because I have missed the Tristan. 
I missed a couple of ships as I've, I've told you before, and I'm one I'm not going to mention, but I really wish that one would come back. And so does Bobby Nash. But well, you and, know. and you know, we could bring the McCure, Marie Curie back at some point. We could bring, but the main thing is let's test this out. Let's see, see if it, how works. it works. Yeah. Yeah, Joe says he'd rather stick to his green screen and low budget for his fan films. For now, it's affordable for my situation, allows me to make my fan film series. Exactly, Joe. Yeah. Uh, Vance and I have no budget, and it helps a lot in my progress. Well, Frank and I have no budget, I promise you. We're not doing fundraisers. I'm not going to do fundraisers. I occasionally will say... I need about $2,300 for new chairs. Everybody would like to buy a chair. Here's a link. Please buy me a chair. And Michael will tell you that we asked for six and we got eight. Bingo. And they're um, very useful. They're very useful chairs. And mm -hmm. we, we asked last year, we need money for Klingon uniforms. Yeah, that's what I would do it for uniforms, props, whatever we needed. We got we got all the money we needed for the uniforms, um, and then one person said, "So you got all the money you needed for the uniforms?" And I said, "Yes." And then he says, "Well, you can have my collection." And Eric Watts gave us his collection of Star Trek Klingon uniforms, and, and, and you can see the results in the Cabalth episode we just released. In fact, Larry Fleming is the commander, Lacot or Captain Lacot. Billy is in there as Commander Kodai. Um, I mean, you won't recognize any of them. <laughs> yeah, it, I did not. I did not recognize Larry. But I knew it was Larry, oh, and I go, I, "Is that I Larry?" I see pictures of Larry in that garb. I recognize him for some reason. I just knew it was it. But I mean, it's a good makeup. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we just we and we had a blast, and I had all these people coming out of the, I had more Klingons than I'd ever needed. And I'm like, cause we only have, let's see, one, two, three, six stations. Well, we ended up like with 12 Klingons. And they're like, what are we going to do? Well, you're going to get grabbed out of your chair and thrown aside. Oh, that'll be cool. Yeah. Who's going to throw me aside? Some other warrior. And I'm like, Nope, the doctor is. Oh, and she picks up this young man and says, Muda, you have missed your physical, and picks him up and drags him off the bridge. And you don't see the whole thing because there's not room for it, but you see her pick him up and just yank him out of the chair. And it's great. And there's two people. The guy that gets to sit down, Rokath, gets to sit down in his chair. There's three people, whereas I just originally had one. And that's just what you do is... You know, somebody extra shows up, I'll put you in. That's why Michael doesn't want to come to, to Lexington. I know it is, Michael. Well, Michael knows that I will. he will be suddenly, uh, Captain, can you sign this for me, please? See, and, that, and that's how I feel, too. Is, is Randy, you and I have had the blessings to be able to do this. And if somebody wants to be in it, I'll work to see if I can fit a person in. Because I've had, you know, I've had the dream. I've been there. As a matter of fact, I was gonna, what I was going to say earlier is eventually I want to do what you do. I want to pull back and let somebody younger take over the helm. I already talked to one of my actors about it. And I'll be on the side if you need Admiral Brisk. But yeah. I don't really like behind the scenes. Yeah, I get in front of the camera. I've broken many, uh, you know, TV, many, uh, many of uh, VCR, I mean, without a doubt. So I've done my damage to the world. So you've I kept like the repair that. shops in business. Huh? You've kept the repair shops in business. Exactly. See, I've been, mm -hmm. I, I have contributed to this world. Yes, you did. <laughs> but I enjoy the behind work, the camera work, the set building. I love set building. <laughs> you know. See, I have a shoot coming up for Caliborn Episode 2 Death Sentence, which was written by Homer Eversall and his brother David Eversall. And it's fantastic. And we filmed it. And there needs to be some pickup shots. And it was so long of a shoot, took so long to get out there. And I basically told Linda, I said, you know, I'm going to give them, loan them one of our cameras, one of the good ones, 
not the best one, but the good ones, really good ones. I hope they don't drop it. Um, <laughs> and let them and let them shoot it and bring it back to me, and I will edit it, and I will fix it, and I'm going to let them do it. I mean, I'm, um, Billy, his wife, Robin, um, I trust them with the camera. They're not going to go do something stupid like drop it in the river that we're filming next to. Um, but we have a unique approach to what's going to go on with this, this special episode, because it uses a new technique that I don't think I've seen anywhere else. And we're going to have fun with it. And they're just going to do the pickup shots and it shouldn't take them, but two or three hours. Yeah. And I'm going to be sitting here with Linda having a brew and watching NASCAR because I need the brew to calm my nerves while they're with a $3,000 camera out in the river. And, but it'll be all right. Boiler maker. Huh? Boiler maker. (laughs) (laughs) This is the bourbon state. And so uh, Linda made me some ice cream the other day and it, it's the most perfect ice cream. It's peach and bourbon. And I'm telling you, I'm not, I, I, I rarely drink people that know me know that, you know, um, I have issues, family issues that concern me. And so that's why I'm not a big drinker, but man, that was a really good, that was a really good bowl of ice cream. I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. Oh, Joe, Joe is new. He, uh, he's, he's, uh, doing one called us, uh, Starship Manchester, and uh, he'll be having stuff. And this, this is uh, we were talking about it earlier. He's doing it in, uh, you know, green screens in his room and stuff like that. And we're, you know, throwing the our editors are throwing it on there. And it just he came to us, or he actually came to me, and he said, "How do I do this?" And you know, we've had quite a. I, I'm sure you've had the same thing, Randy, where people have come to you and said, "What do you do?" And I say, this is what I do. If there's anything I can do to help you out, if you need anything that I can honestly do for you, I'll give you all the advice or whatever I can. You know, because this is something where you and I were what I call the dark ages. We came from the dark (laughs) ages when everybody was at war with each other. Well, they still are. <laughs> yeah, but not, but not as bad as it was. I mean, you got to admit, not as bad. But there are they still... It was as bad, but they're still at war. We, yeah, we, yeah, we both know that that's going on, and, and both of us stay out of it. I'm like, nope, I'm not going to be part of that. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Yeah, kind of thing. No, I, I, I try to steer clear, too. I mean, there are certain, certain things, but, you know. Um, but the, the fact is, I, I think that the goodwill is better than it was. And I think a lot of people are appreciating that. And they are. And I mean, we had, um, it wasn't really, it was relic films. Relic films came, came over and said they make Bigfoot movies. Oh, okay. And they go out there and listen for Bigfoot and record sounds and look for evidence and that sort of thing. Cool. Cool. He said he'd come over. He'd be our medical chief medical officer. And I'm like, great. He says, I have this idea for a movie. And I'm like, let's do it. He's like, you don't even know what it is. And I said, no. He says, well, what if you don't like it? And I said, well, send me the script. But I'm going to tell you, we're going to do it. I made so few changes in his script. I mean, hardly any. And... It's reclamation. It's part one and part two. It's Tristan episode, Tri- yeah. not an episode. It's two parts of a Tristan. That was when we kept to fifteen minutes. Now I wished I'd gone a little longer on both parts. But that, that's a no. good, that's a good question. We'll we'll come back to that. But continue on with your story. Yeah. So, guys in Huntsville makes movies, makes movies, um, semi professional movies. He pays his cast. We want to do a Star Trek film with you. Okay. He films it. His actors act it. They do their, their, their thing. 
there's a Chuck Kelso um, script, Charles Kelso. Did it differently than I would have done it necessarily. Did it differently than Chuck would have probably liked it. They added a space bear, but that's okay. Because it added drama and humor to the to the script, to the scene. Um, they finished it. They had a rough edit. They, could, they got stuck. I'm like, well, let me have it. I took it. I didn't change anything that they had done. Added visual effects, cleaned up the edit, cleaned up the sound as much as I could. They, they were using on-location mics at a park, at a state park, where they were filming this beautiful alien planet sequence. Yeah. But we could hear kids screaming in the background, and I'm like, let me dub that down, let me dub that down. And I got it cleaned up enough. Is it perfect? Oh, God, no, 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 no. Is it watchable? Oh, yeah. Is it good? Yes, it is. And, and so I've helped two groups like that. I've got a third group that contacted us during our open house two weeks ago. And they had made movies back in the late 80s, early 90s yeah. using VHS mm. and editing, editing the VHS by playing it from one recorder into another recorder. I remember those days. Yes. I do too. Mm-hmm. And I, they said, can we, can we use your sets? And I'm like, certainly we're going to have some restrictions, but certainly. And I intend, and they're like, they can't use any of our set dressing that's ship, ship specific, but they were like, well, where do we get these? And I said, you can get them printed anywhere. There's just printed PBS. And your controls light up from underneath. Mine are yeah. not. Mine are printed on the top with vivid colors. And the lights make them pop. Yeah. From exactly. above. So they're sitting there going, well, how much will that cost? And I said, well, I was getting it done in Birmingham. Uh, new ships, about $320 worth of printing. We don't have that. And I'm like, well, I can't. I'm not going to print it for you. They're like, but, exactly. but they the lowest the, they uh, get a little cheaper if they go to to because I originally started off with Office Depot. Well, they can get it cheaper um, by not paying the shipping. See, I I, yeah. I was getting it shipped from Birmingham because oh. I've been with the company forever. When I send them something, they send it back exactly how I want it. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. That that's important to me. Yet, you know, I've worked with people. There are some people, though, that want to just, well, we're going to use your sets. I'm like, who are you? And they're, well, I'm so-and-so. And I'm like, yeah, well, we're going to use your sets. I'm like, no. People that ask come to me and ask and, and very nice and take a tour and that sort of thing. Yeah, we'll be glad to help you out. And, you know, you – I don't think that's happened to you yet, Frank. Wait till someone shows up and says, we're going to use your sets <laughs> without you having scheduled it. Hmm. No. No, that fortunately hasn't happened to me, but <clears throat> we'll keep that in, in the back of my, my, my head for that. From that. Yeah. Michael knows who I'm talking about. It's a... Um, they were making adult films, Frank, and they wanted to use my sets. Nope. Not going to let that happen. I thought she was down on the Farragut set. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I, I don't know nothing about that. Hector, do you know anything about that? No, I don't know anything about that, Randy. No, Hector I, says, I, I told Willow. Oh, Willow, do you know anything about that? Don't talk to me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that, that that that's an offline. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But if you, you you know what I'm saying, people want to use your sets. I've had, I, I know that there's a group that filmed part of a video, a rock video for somebody on their sets, and I'm like, I might have let them do that. Might have, but. I have had a friend of mine from the uh, uh, Blithering Humdingers, one of my built friends, he said, Frank, 
can I write a song and film it on your set? And that person is a good friend of mine, and I would have no problems letting him do that. <laughs> but he's a good friend. You know, well, he that, asked. He asked. He didn't yeah. say, I am going to be filming on your yeah. set. So no, he said makes the difference. And I said, sure, you know. Yeah. I mean, he's he's uh, covered a couple oh, at least one of my songs. Yeah, I mean, they're great they're great people, you know. We, I see them all the time, every convention that they're at, you know what? So but that's the type of thing. I told people, um, if you want to come and see the sets, just give me a call and I'd be more than happy to show you around. You know, I give tours at least once or twice a month. I mean, call me up. Somebody says, Well, how much does the tour cost? Nothing. It doesn't cost anything. No, I, I had a, I had a I had a special needs young man actually who came through the set recently. Um if special needs and they're like, he can't be around other people. And I'm like, no, I'll give him a tour. I, they says, well, we need you to wear a mask because is a, he's immunocompromised. I'm like, be glad to, wear a mask, gave him a tour. Can he have pictures? Absolutely. Anything he wants to take a picture of. Yeah. Can he wear one of the uniforms? Absolutely. And they were sitting there going, what do you do with the uniform when it's done? I said, going to drop it in the laundry like we do for everyone. Yeah. And that's, so. and that's, and that's the thing. And, and that's why... We don't charge for set tours. No. We don't, uh, you know, if even if somebody, I, I let them, you know, film on the bridge, I probably would maybe ask for a donation for electricity, you know? That might be, you know, because it's in my mother-in-law's house. That might be, depends on what they think. See, with the, um, with the prof semi-professional group, I didn't charge them for electricity because I had certain controls and approvals yeah. that made it one of a joint production. And it's the same thing with relic films. I didn't charge him for anything. He did. He did all the work, including the visual effects. And we provided him the sets, the actors, the costumes, and he brought himself and a couple of other actors. And it was a great experience. Win, win, win. Yeah. I, I could see that. And, you know, I mean, I certainly wouldn't charge them for any camera crews or anything like that. You know, I just no. said, I just being my mother in law. <laughs> I, I had somebody was sitting there saying, How much would you charge me to, to, to do the wedding? And I said, You can come down here and go to do wedding, but you can't eat down here. Oh, okay. And then they says, Well, we would like you to videotape it. And I'm like, $400. And I'm like, They're like, why so much? The other guy was going to do 175. And I said, does the other guy have a bridge? And they're like, no. And the other guy semi-retired like me that doesn't really feel like he needs to work. So she's like, well, you're not really working. You're just shooting a video. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> That's like, you're not doing any work. You're just a housewife. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the house husband, so. That's right. <laughs> so. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, I do. Uh, believe me, I do. Oh, wow. I tell you. Well, Frank, I've enjoyed this. It is my bedtime. Well, it's actually not my bedtime. It is my time to sit down and get caught up on dark shadows. <laughs> not yeah, the time. I'm, you've got a long way to go. Not the time traveling part of dark shadows. That's where he is. Well, I'm in there, but I think I've got only three episodes to go, and then Victoria Winters will mysteriously reappear in 1967 or whatever. And half the time they'll pretend that she's been gone forever, and half the time they'll say, no, no, we never left this room. And um, uh, I've, I've got to learn to, this is the problem with time travel, is that continuity errors abound. Thank but Frank, you. I've been I've enjoyed it. I, I hope I haven't distracted. Uh, no, no. I think it, it, it was perfect because we had a chance to talk about our love for films. And, yeah. our, our love for, and I think that's important to, for people to really see two people who two, not two different things, but two different eras and, and are, you know, have not really worked together, discuss how they approach it. I think that's yeah. great. And, you know, what's cool, too, is that we have a lot of mutual friends. Um, George Cahan is one of my most favorite. I've been telling Michael, 
Uh, I love George Cahan's films. I love them. I really do. Many do. Uh -huh. <laughs> what? Uses, he uses the, the older equipment too to, to put that stuff together. I know. <laughs> um, I'm like, oh my gosh, George. Uh, but he, his films are, it's not always the quality of the production as much as it is the quality of the story. Yes, and that's what people have to understand is the story is the important part. I mean, I watch bad movies. Oh, that's so bad. That's so bad. No, it's not. It's not. The story's great. Um, well, what do you mean? It's so stupid, stupid, stupid. And I'm like, you sound like the guy from Plan 9 and from Outer Space. Um, uh, there's so many films that people just dismiss. And they're actually quite good and quite entertaining. And that's all that I ask that my stories be is good, entertaining. And somebody says, well, I give your, your studio a 91. Oh, great. Thank you. I appreciate that. Come on. Let's go, go party. I know. Go. <laughs> so, but Michael, thank you for having us. I'm sorry that we took over your show from you. Well, I'm glad you did because, as I said, I have the internet problems that I got solved now, I think. Which, yeah, I haven't make, seen They make no me. sense. No, they, it makes no sense what happened. But, right. you know. It's probably. because they did, because Randy and I conducted our own interviews and it was great. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> You'll get our bill next week. Uh, we expect. Um, oh, well, how I, I figured that. I think seven fifty a piece. Yes. Yeah. Seven fifty yes. a piece. And then you'll get you'll get your um, uh, web page bill, Randy. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> never mind. He will do your web page, but he's a he's an assist associate. Uh, he's a producer on mine, and he won't do my web page. You know. That's because you're not listing him. You're listing him as producer. I, I list him as associate producer and webmaster. <laughs> well, you do, and then you know I'm gone, so that's fine. <laughs> He's been trying. To, every time he turns around, he says, have you fired me yet? I go, no, I'm going to give you another job. <laughs> but, um, I know, but I know he's more dedicated to you, and that's fine with me because that 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 is – He's been with you a lot longer. I've been uh, I've been a thorn in thorn in his side a lot longer. <laughs> Michael has been a help with us for quite a long time. Oh, yeah. and we are truly grateful for it because um, Michael is my sounding board. Like when somebody has really pissed me off, you don't see me blowing up very often. Blows up to me. me. I blow yeah. up to Michael. I blow up to Michael too. <laughs> <laughs> It's so much easier than blowing up at the other person who is no doubt recording your conversation and is going to use it to embarrass you. Yeah. Wait a minute. Hold it. Did, why have you been playing me all those, Michael? <laughs> I have lights somewhere, don't I? Oh, uh, there you should, yes. Unless, unless Willow did something. No, I, I I had the electrician when we when we bought this house wire it for me and me being a lefty kind of light switch guy, and there's one room that's a righty and it bothers me. All right, come in, come in. Now, now is Linda a left-handed person? No. Well, then isn't that if you had it done for you, how does she fare? Was she here to place the order? Ooh, <laughs> that's harsh. <laughs> well, well, no. She wasn't here to place the order. I can't help it. If you miss staff, if you missed staff meetings, I cannot be held responsible for any decisions made during those staff meetings. You should know that. I was going to say, I know you there's a reason. <laughs> Randy owned a business long enough. That's the whole deal with this is I've owned a business and I make business decisions and somebody says, but it's just a hobby. Yeah. But if I don't run it like a business, the C the CFO, which is Linda would make decisions contrary or make would not approve any purchases. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, they'd be detrimental to the uh, financial stability. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, and to the quality of the production. Right. And we don't want that. No. 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 Well, Randy, um, thank you for joining us. I really do appreciate it. And um, I will stay with Frank for a little bit longer. Yep. And, Y'all have a good evening. Thank you again for out. having me. No Thank problem. you again for having me. I'll talk to y'all later. Okay, take it easy. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. I like that. that was really good. I think we had a great discussion. I think the viewers got a lot out of it. Yeah, yeah. So, um... So we yeah you covered a lot. I missed a little bit of it, but I will go back and look at some of it. But so I don't want to totally, you know, repeat or whatever. But before we close, I wanted to let people know that um, we're going to have two special uh, trekking across the universes in August. As of now, one is on Saturday, August sixth at 2 p.m. Eastern time. And that will be with Samuel Cockings, who does a lot of visual effects for a lot of fan films all over the world. Yeah, actually, he built the model of the Harrison for me. Exactly. And on 20th of August, two weeks after that, Nick Cook will be oh, our guest yeah. at 2 p.m. Yeah. Eastern. So I'm looking forward to that. And um, on our regular Monday night broadcast, on August 8th, Matt Acra from Potemkin Pictures will be with us. He is in, he plays four different characters in four different productions with Potemkin Pictures. So that's, he, um, he's very, he has a good time. And um, not totally scheduled what date, but also in August, we're going to have a, uh, um, Manu in Teremi, uh, who played uh, in Star Trek Voyager. And he's going to be joining us in August. And in September, we're going to have Todd Habercorn, who oh. is a voice actor who also <laughs> was in Starship Farragut as a Romulan. And he played a Vulcan in... Um, Star Trek right. continues. Thank you. <laughs> the name left me. Yeah, he's um, playing Spock. Yeah, so the, uh, those are coming up. I'm working on some other people to schedule, but uh, I haven't got that confirmed yet. But uh, we're excited about that. And uh, so, Frank, um, your next big project filming will be when just okay. to sum it up it will be starting august 27th the next big project will be rebirth uh and that is going to be well, probably about a 15 to 25 minute episode and um that's the external the yeah the, yeah the, on august we're going to be shooting the external that's going to be the landing party scene and then mm -hmm. we have uh, we have like three scenes that are for landing party, and then we have, I think it's nine, nine scenes, and we have, um, we have a couple different things uh, for the bridge and in the briefing room and between two ships. So it, it's it's going to be interesting. Um, then uh, we're going to be working on a, a short. Uh, we hope to have a short Christmas uh, type things like. Uh, Potemkin has in mm -hmm. uh, Star Trek International Pan Productions. Um, and I hope to have that out around Christmas. We'll probably be, uh, it's going to be a small one. So it depends on, on who we get. That should be a quick shoot because it's only going to be, it's not going to be a big production. It's just some basic thoughts that we had around the Christmas time and, you know, gift giving and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. we'll see how that comes out. Um, but my most exciting one is the one that is being written now, and that will be starting, this will probably be our major project for next year, and that's called Romulan Ales, and it's going to probably be, well, it's going to be a two-parter. 
and we have some interesting things that are going to be going on in that. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to that project coming up. It's a concept that I had that uh, Vance and I uh, messed around with, and Vance came up with a perfect way to introduce this, and I love the, the concept. He's been writing busily away. Uh, poor guy thought he had part one done, and I said, no, we need a couple more little parts in here, and he said, I thought I was going to be able to get to part two. I said, I'm sorry, don't kill me. He says, that's okay. And then we started discussing something. And that's where we had a brilliant idea that's going to be in those two scenes. And now he's happy to write. So, you know, you, you got gotta, to work with it. But uh, Vance has been doing a fantastic job. I'm very, very pleased with um, and very thankful to have Jason as sort of like my right-hand man on the spot mm -hmm. here. Uh, he, he's, uh, I wish he could have stayed longer. Um, of course, uh, the rest of the cast, uh, Stephen Hall, um, Jennifer Nash, uh, Shailen, um, Nelms, uh, myself, uh, and Jason, we all work for Bank of America, so I'm, I'm stealing people from that. Cheryl Lambeth, who some of you out there may know from, uh, you know, different, her different projects, especially in the Carolinas. She's very big in Virginia. Um, she is playing our, our communications officer. And uh, she was also an alumni from Farragut where she played the Romulan commander in uh, Price of Anything. I was behind her with my gray wig on as Romulan uh, subordinate. So you may see that coming up someplace across the line. It'd be interesting. It will um, be. Mm -hmm. And so... We just keep on plugging away. We're very excited about what we have. Um, we have a lot in, in the can, not in the can, but we have uh, one that will be coming out actually after Rebirth um, that we're doing next. We have one that's called um, After the Fall, and it's a, a film that we only have one person to film it uh, left, and it, it was one that we had put together um as an after to reverse so that may come out well that's probably going to come out too before uh definitely come out before romulan ale so hopefully within the next uh six months we'll have three more you know the christmas uh rebirth and uh after the fall out and then be working heavily next year on romulan ale part 22. well that is great I think we're going to kind of wind down now, Frank, but thank yeah, you very I'm much good. for coming. Uh, yeah. Sorry I was having internet issues, but oh, no I still don't understand what happened, but it's working now. So. Well, like you and I usually do on the phone, it's called the NSA is still watching us. Well, and the, as they should. As they should. As they and should. you know what it was? Snapples is out eating your wires. Well, you know, I was wondering about that. Yes, I was right wondering right. about that. And Samples. I think that is Samples. Say hi to Michael. Say hi to Michael. <laughs> yes, the fake pug. Yes. He is a fake. He called you a fake pug, baby. He doesn't love you. <laughs> but anyway, I would like to thank everyone for joining us. And we hope that you come to our next episodes. So take care. Trekking across the universe. And see you next time. Take care. <laughs>